Let's imagine I want to climb Mount Everest. I'm all excited about it. I start telling people about it. I'm watching YouTube videos. I'm gathering supplies. I'm putting everything together. I'm talking to people, getting their advice, figuring all this stuff out. There's only one problem. I've never climbed a mountain before. I've never even gone on a hike before. I've never set up camp. I have no survival skills. I don't know what to do if something goes wrong. So what would you tell me at this point? If this were you and I was telling you, I'm going to go climb Mount Everest and here's all this stuff I've been doing and I've been taking these classes online, you would probably tell me to start with something simple. Hey, maybe just go find a small mountain that you can climb up and down in one day and then maybe like get some gear, climb to the top of another mountain, camp at the top and then come back down and let's make sure you're in cell phone uh, coverage so that you can call somebody when you break your ankle and don't know what to do. This would be good advice, right? Let's start with something that's a little easier, not so, you know, you're definitely going to die, right? The idea is to pick something small, build your skill set, build your confidence, and then over time, start working your way up. You're not saying like, Tim, you're never allowed to climb Mount Everest, but you are saying like, Let's start with something small and build our way up. So why? Why in God's name are so many fuck? Okay, I'm going to do a second take here and I'm going to take out all the cursy words. All right. So why are so many authors deciding they're going to write some nine part epic series with seven protagonists whose stories are all intertwining set in this huge expansive fantasy world with this brand new system of magic that's never even been conceived of or heard of before. And they decide this, this is going to be the first book that I write. This is the same thing as setting out to climb Mount Everest and you've never even gone on a hike before. You've never written a book before. You've never done this before. And you've decided you're going to do this huge epic quest. I'm going to give you the same advice you would give me if I was setting out to climb Mount Everest and had no idea what I was doing. Start with something simple. Do you really think that George R.R. R. Martin set out and wrote A Game of Thrones on his first try? George R.R. R. Martin's first published piece was a short story in 1971. His first novel was not published until 1977 and it was titled Dying of the Light. Have you ever heard of it? He did not publish A Game of Thrones until 1996. 25 years after he got his first short story published. So he was not able to do this setting out on his first try. He had to build up his skill set as a writer, as a storyteller, to the point that he could actually create a book like that. You're going to be the same way. So what I want you to do is start with something much easier. It's not going to be easy. Writing a book is really hard. Writing a book is very complex. Writing a really good book that works on multiple different levels, that gets the reader to catharsis at the end, changes their life, that's really, really hard to do. And so why are we overcomplexifying it by just adding all of these elements and elements and elements? Because each time you add one of these elements, it doesn't just get a little bit harder, it gets exponentially harder. So I have a few ideas for you today on how you can make the writing of your first book a little bit easier. Let's take out some of that complexity. Let's narrow it down and make it into something that we can actually do. Because here's the thing. If you can't write a simple story, you definitely, definitely cannot write a big, huge, complex story. So my first piece of advice is to pick one protagonist and only one protagonist. Don't try to come up with seven interweaving protagonist tales. Come up with one protagonist because here's the truth. If you can't tell a story and get me, the reader, to care deeply about one protagonist, you definitely can't do it with a lot of different protagonists. So we're going to cut out all of that complexity and we're going to just tell a story about one protagonist. The next thing I think you should do is make the protagonist a fictionalized version of you. I was talking to a writer the other day and they were telling me about their story and they kind of they were kind of embarrassed because they're like, well, you know, this is really just kind of a fictionalized version of me. I'm like, that's great. That's perfect for your first book. Why? 
because you won't wonder what the person would do in your situation. When you sit there and you think about your character and you're like, huh, I wonder what they would do next. You just ask yourself because this is just a fictionalized version of you. It makes so many things so much easier. You don't have to try to get into other people's heads. You don't have to try to figure out what somebody would do in this situation. It all comes down to just asking yourself, what would I do in this situation? And that's the answer. So really consider a fictionalized version of yourself. Now you can change the gender, you can change the age, you can change things. But generally, when it comes to personality, emotions, all of those things, make them a fictionalized version of you. It makes things so much easier. The next piece of advice kind of dovetails with that one. I recommend you write it in first person. The reason why is because this is how we're used to telling stories. When we tell stories about things that happen to us, we tend to tell them in first person. So switching over to something like third person makes it more complex because we're not used to kind of pulling back and telling a story from that third person view. Now, of course, there are plenty of first books, great first books written from the third person point of view. So this one I'm a little softer on, but it's something to consider. This is how we normally tell stories. I talk about something I did last week and it's all in first person. So if you're going to pick a fictionalized version of yourself, consider just making the story first person and telling it from your point of view. Next piece of advice, keep it short. Less than 100,000 words. At the absolute max, 100,000 words. You do not need to write the 269,000 word Finnegan's Wake by James Joyce, right? Not to mention that took him 17 years to write. So keep it short. Now, we're talking specifically about writing your first novel, your first full book in this, but if you haven't already, start with short stories, start with a novella, start with something short and build up. But if we're talking about your first book, I recommend keeping it under 100,000 words. Again, if you can't get a reader to be excited to read 100,000 words, you're definitely not going to get them to be excited to read 200,000 words. This is what I want you to take away from this. If you can't execute something that is simple, you definitely can't execute something that's big and complex. So start with your first novel being under 100,000 words. Next up, limit your cast of characters. Don't have a huge amount of characters that you have to introduce into the story. Make sure every single character is there for a really, really good reason. Now, this is actually true in every book that you write in the future. You should make sure that every character is there for a really good reason. But in particular, with your first book, I want you to limit the cast of characters. You should not have three dozen named and described characters that you're trying to keep track of throughout your whole story. In fact, if you're doing that, I think you might be breaking rule one, which is just pick one protagonist. So make sure that you limit the cast of characters so that you only have to keep up with so many different storylines, so many different motivations uh, as much as possible. The next thing is to think about how your forces of antagonism are showing up in your story. Again, I recommend just picking one and I recommend making it another person. That just makes it so simple for your protagonist to be fighting against an antagonist. That makes it so much simpler. But even if it turns into more of like forces of antagonism, like the government or a major storm or something like that, again, limit the amount of forces of antagonism that you're dealing with in your story to just a couple so that you can keep track of them and you always know which direction your protagonist needs to go. Lastly, I'm going to mention this, narrow the world. Do not create a huge sweeping landscape of a brand new world narrow the world. There are fantastic books written where they all take place in one location, one very, very small location. Even if you're writing science fiction, that's totally fine. Limit it down to one spaceship. There are fantastic movies and stories in one spaceship, right? So limit the world down so that you're not trying to keep track of and build this huge epic landscape that you're trying to tell a story inside of that you get lost and so does the reader limit it down. Okay, I know I said that was the last one, but I'm going to give you a bonus tip. Pick a masterwork. Pick a book that is something that you love, that you wish you could have written instead of whatever the author is that wrote it. Make sure it's one that has one protagonist, a small cast of characters, all the things we just talked about. But find a book that's already been written, that you love, 
that again, if you could just wipe off that name on the cover and put your name on it, it would be that book. That's your masterwork. And the reason you want to pick a masterwork is it allows you to have something to check when you get stuck. So as you're working on your book and you get to certain spots in it and you're not sure what to do next, you're not sure where you should go with the story, you can go to the masterwork and see how a great author did it before you. So that's the bonus tip is to pick a masterwork that is similar to the type of story you're trying to tell and study that so that you understand how a great author that has come before you solved the same type story problems that you're trying to solve in yours. So as you can see, with all of this advice, and I could keep going on this, the general idea here is we're going to limit down our choices. Less characters, one protagonist, less antagonist, less, um, less space in your world, right? We want it all limited down so that it's much easier to make decisions. Because again, every time you add a new character, a new setting, a new force of antagonism, every time you add something, it doesn't just get a little bit harder. It gets much more complex and it starts getting complex at an exponential rate. I want you to be successful with your first book. I want you to write a book that is something you are absolutely proud of and I don't want it to take you 20 years. So I wanna end with a question. If you're balking at this, if you're resisting this, pushing back on this, if you're rolling your eyes, if you're kind of thinking like, ah, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about, why are you feeling that way? I just wanna ask, like really consider why you're resisting this advice. Is it because you are putting off actually writing your book? I've talked to so many different writers who are spending so much time on their character development and world development and figuring out their magic system and figuring out how the hyperdrive works on their spaceship. And they're spending months and months and years and years researching and thinking and considering and taking more and more and more classes, trying to figure all this stuff out. And they never actually publish their book. They never actually write and publish their book. They're using it as a way to put off actually writing their book. And I want you to actually write your book. Now, I know there are exceptions to this rule. At StoryGrid Publishing, we published a book that was an exception to this rule. We published The Sand Sea by a first-time author, Mike McClellan. That's 740-ish pages, epic fantasy, lots of characters, new magic system, new world. He hand-drew maps for it. I mean, it's this huge thing. It's his first book. It's a fantastic book. It also took him 12 years to write it. It also took him three full rewrites of the 200,000 plus word manuscript. So it was a lot. Now, he would tell you that was the right decision for him, and I wouldn't argue with him, but that is a rarity. That is an exception that he actually finished it, and it ended up being a fantastic book. What I see more of over and over and over is writers that have convinced themselves that they're going to write this huge sweeping epic fantasy novel or this huge sweeping romance. And if they can't do it, they're just going to keep working on it until it's done, but they're not actually working on it. They're never actually going to publish anything. And I want you to publish something. So if you are setting out to write your very first book, I highly recommend you don't start out by trying to climb Mount Everest. Start with a simple project, limit the choices, and actually finish and publish a book that you're proud of. And then in your next one, complicate it a little more. And your next one, a little bit more. And maybe in 25 years, you might write the next A Game of Thrones. Okay, that's the end here. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe. Hit that little bell button so that you get notified when we come out with new videos. We have lots of resources at storygrid.com to help you write your next great novel. Go check it out. Sign up for the email newsletter. You won't regret it. I'll see you in the next video.